Hello! If you are watching this video, then chances are that you have either recently had a hysterectomy or you are about to have a hysterectomy, and you are looking for some idea of how long recovery will take and what recovery is like. We'll go over that in this video and more. Before we dive in, hello, my name is Valerie. I blog at babywisemom.com. I am the mother to four children, and I am currently, as I record this, coming up on my three-year anniversary of having a hysterectomy. My hysterectomy was completely unplanned. It came as a surprise. I found out about it about two weeks before it had to happen, and so it was a big whirlwind. And it was not my favorite thing ever, but there are a lot of things you can do to prepare, a lot of things you can do to help yourself recover quickly and easily, at least as quickly and easily as possible. And of course, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's talk about recovery first, because I think that's what we all wonder about. Like, how am I going to do? How is this going to impact me? How will this affect my life? What's recovery going to be like? For me, recovery was very difficult mentally and emotionally as well as physically. It was really like a roller coaster in all of those areas. I would start to feel like I was getting better and then things would go down. I would get worse. And then I start to feel better and then things would go down and it would get worse. My first piece of advice for you with recovery is give yourself six weeks. Just plan on it taking six weeks before you can get up and at them and maybe be back-ish to your old self. Don't rush it, don't push it. Allow that six weeks to pass before you start having expectations for yourself. That means you need to clear your calendar. You need to get yourself open so that you can take the time needed to recover. Most women don't really sit around and do nothing. We have very busy plates and very a lot of things to take care of. So do all that you can before your surgery to clear anything that needs to be taken care of after and then after your surgery, just those things can wait. Those things can wait until after you are recovered. If you step in too early, then it's always hard to backtrack. It's hard to say, yeah, I'm feeling good. I can come take care of that thing again. And then it's really hard to step back and say, you know what? Just kidding. I actually can't take care of that. I need to rest again. If you just stay resting and stay recovering, people will accept that much easier than if you go back and forth. The pain after having a hysterectomy was much greater than I anticipated it would be. I kind of expected it to be more along the lines of a childbirth recovery, but this is a major surgery and even people who've had cesareans for delivering babies find out that hysterectomies are very different from that recovery also. Now, your recovery will vary from person to person. We all have different pain tolerances, and there's so many different things that can affect what your recovery is like. For example, exactly what type of hysterectomy are you having? What is the procedure that is removing your uterus? Another impact will be your age. And the younger you are, the faster you recover from surgery typically. And how does your body individually respond to such things? How fast do you heal as an individual? What is your pain tolerance like? Did you have any complications in your surgery? What was your physical fitness like before surgery? Typically, the more fit you are, the faster you will be able to recover after a surgery. And along that same line is your overall health. The healthier you are, typically the faster you'll be able to recover from a surgery. Another huge factor is what kind of help do you have at home? And how much are you actually able to rest and let your body recover before you jump into day-to-day -day activities? For me, my recovery timeline, I remember my doctor telling me before my surgery, like, you will, you'll be fine after a couple of weeks, you'll feel totally fine. And so that put a lot of pressure on me to feel totally fine at two weeks. And so I remember going into my two-week appointment, my post-op appointment, and I was dressed, I had makeup on. And she commented like, wow, you look really good. Most people come to this appointment in their pajamas. And I thought like, 
why are you telling me I'll be fine at two weeks? If people come to the hospital or come to see you in their pajamas, like that's not fine. That's not feeling fine. Like that's not feeling great. Most people don't go to the doctor in their pajamas unless they don't feel great, right? So at that moment, I realized like, I'm sure she was trying to encourage me to like put my best effort forth to get back to normal. You you don't want to just sit around. You need to move around. You need to have some physical activity in order for your body to recover. That is important. But there needs to be this balance of having some physical activity, but not too much. When I went to my six-week post-op, I still was not fully healed. I still had stitches inside. Things were not fully healed. I was not feeling great at six weeks. I felt a lot better than I did a couple of weeks into it, but I still did not feel like myself. And I was kind of expecting six weeks is going to hit and I'm going to feel totally great. And I did not. And she told me I was not healed and it would probably take a couple more weeks before I was fully healed. And I did notice at that eight week mark, I got a lot better. I felt a lot better at that point and started to really start to be more of me. Even with that said, it took me until about six months post-op before I didn't remember every single day, oh yeah, I had a hysterectomy. So up until that six month point, there was some movement or something I did every day that was like, oh yeah, I had that surgery. So you've got to have some patience with yourself and expect even a few months down the line, you might have a day where you're just exhausted and you really need to take it easy that day. I do have a blog post that is very popular, people love it, that outlines my first eight weeks in detail of what the recovery was like and and my whole roller coaster. So you can get a lot of insight by reading that post. Okay, let's talk about some things that make recovery easier. One is to walk. Like I've previously mentioned, you can't just sit still. You do need to move in order to help the body heal. They've just found that moving around really helps the body to heal faster. It's finding this balance though of moving without moving too much. Something else you'll really want to do is avoid constipation. And so you need to eat foods that will help with that. You need to avoid foods that would hurt that and add some things into your normal diet that you might not normally do. Like I'm not normally a prune juice drinker, but I did drink that for a while after the surgery. You also want to manage your pain and your inflammation. So don't try to be the hero. If you're in pain, take the painkiller. Let that help your body to heal. Another important part of recovery is to rest. Let your body take that rest. Recovering from the surgery is super exhausting. I read that you need 1,000 to 2,000 extra calories every day to help your body heal from this surgery. If you put that into perspective, a pregnant woman needs 300 extra calories. A nursing woman needs 500 extra calories. If you're recovering from the surgery, you need 1,000 to 2,000 extra calories a day. That is how much energy your body is using in order to help you recover. That means you're going to be tired. Think of how tired you are when you are pregnant. Your body is exhausted. It has had something major happen to it that isn't the normal process of life and it is trying to heal all of of those internal wounds, perhaps external wounds and get you back to normal. I'm not normally a napper. I, even when I'm pregnant, don't nap. I don't nap when I have newborns. It's very rare that I take a nap, but when I was recovering from the surgery, I needed, needed a nap every day for the first two weeks. So plan on, that's just part of your schedule. Plan that into your schedule. Every day for the first two weeks, you have nap time. And beyond that two weeks, there will be days you need naps. Like I said, like even a few months in, you might find, I'm gonna need a nap today. So plan it into the schedule for the first two weeks. And then maybe after that, plan on it every other day. But keep it every day if you still need it. But for that six week recovery time, plan on naps happening frequently. When I went to my two-week post-op, my doctor gave me some really great advice for recovery. She said, when you do something, it's going to take a lot out of you. So plan on doing one thing a day. 
So let's say you have some event at your child's school that you need to do on Thursday in a couple of weeks. Have that be your only event that day. Don't try to go to the grocery store and go to your child's school on Thursday. Just have one event a day, spread them out because it's going to wipe you out when you have an event. Another really great recovery tip is to strengthen your pelvic floor. So you want, if you can do that before your surgery, absolutely spend the time strengthening your pelvic floor. Every woman should be strengthening her pelvic floor. This is something that we are told often and I really came to appreciate since having the surgery. That should be part of your day no matter what, but for sure leading up to the surgery and once you feel up to it, working that pelvic floor after your surgery. For sure, don't do it within the first two weeks. Ask your doctor at the two-week post-op. You may have to wait until six weeks, and you'll feel it if you try it too soon. So but really strengthen that pelvic floor because after your surgery, that still can be an issue. If you start coughing, you get a cold, you can really weaken that pelvic floor. Or things like sitting too much can weaken that pelvic floor or so much um, that you can do that you just really need to work on that being part of your daily life, that you are doing Kegels and strengthening that pelvic floor. One tip, if you find that your pelvic floor is really weak and you're not able to get it back, talk to your doctor to find a physical therapist that you can see that specializes in that. There are physical therapists that focus on that area of the body for women and they can really help you a lot. So when I was a few months postpartum, I got bronchitis, which was bad news for my pelvic floor. And so I went and saw a physical therapist who actually happens to be one of my really good friends who specializes in that. And she was able to give me lots of exercises and some products I could try and things I can do to help fix what had happened and to prevent issues in the future. So get in to see a physical therapist if you start to notice problems. So what kind of items do you need for recovery? And again, this can really depend on you, but here are some ideas. One is pain relief. Have the pain relief that your doctor prescribes, but also something I really recommend is called a TENS unit, T-E-N-S unit. It helps so much with relieving pain, and I use that all the time on my lower back because when you're having surgery, a lot of pressure is placed there and then you're sitting a lot after the surgery. And so that hurt as much as anything else on my body. And the TENS unit really helped with that. Having some good ice bags would really be a good idea also, not only to just place on your abdomen, but again, your back. You'll also really want things to suck on. It just really helps. It helps lubricate your throat and can really help you Avoid coughing, which not fun if you are in recovery from a hysterectomy. Another great item to have on hand is a heating pad. You want ice initially, but then it's good to alternate ice and heat. I also very highly recommend activated charcoal. These are little capsules of charcoal. You can buy them on Amazon, at your local pharmacy, and you just take a couple of pills, it helps so much with the gas pain. So after you have surgery, it's very common to have trapped gas in your body from your anesthesia and all that's going on with that. And so the activated charcoal breaks down that gas because I had that back pain. I also had such bad gas pain. And so taking the activated charcoal really helped alleviate that. And along with something to suck on is cough drops in case you get a legitimate cough where you're really having to fight off coughing. You want to make sure you will not be coughing while you're recovering. And along that same line, cold medicine. You might also need some sleep aid. Something I like is Tylenol PM because it's very mild. I can take one Tylenol PM and it can help me be more drowsy at night to sleep. So you're so tired and exhausted that all you want to do is sleep, but it also can be hard to sleep and you can be in so much pain that it's hard to find a comfortable position to sleep. So having a sleep aid can help with that. You'll also want tissues nearby. Something else that's great for sleep are earplugs. That way, I recommend that in the hospital for sure and then even at home just so you can block out the noise and just sleep. 
I liked having hand lotion by me at all times. And if you like essential oils, then it would be good to have some of your favorite essential oils around, either to help you relax or to help invigorate you or to help cheer you up. You also want some entertainment because you're going to be sitting a lot. So think of books you'd like to do, Sudoku puzzles, logic puzzles, TV shows you want to binge, anything you may want to crochet, anything you can do sitting down, think of those kind of things and have that ready and on hand. You'll also want to make sure you have comfortable clothes to wear. And I had mine in November and so it was, I really liked having some warm fuzzy socks, like things that just kept me cozy and warm. If you're having this in the summer, you might want things to keep you cool, but comfortable, always comfortable. Avoid things with bands at the waist that you don't want pressure on your waist. I also found my Fitbit to be really valuable during recovery because I really struggle finding the balance between pushing myself enough but not too much. I tend to go too far. So using the Fitbit really helped me see how many steps I took a day and how I felt after that. So let's say one day I took 3,000 steps and I felt good. Let's say the next day I took 5,000 and I was way too exhausted. So using the Fitbit could really help me monitor myself and watch what I was doing and say, okay, you need to slow it down because you're, you're getting close to that 5,000 step mark and you're not ready for that yet. Like I said, when I had my surgery, I found out I needed it and it was scheduled for two weeks later. And I was the music director of a musical between in that two week period. The musical closed on Saturday and I had my surgery on Monday. So I didn't have a lot of time for preparing mentally or physically, but there are some things that I think would have been really nice to do and some things that were nice to do. So one thing that I think would be really nice is to prepare yourself physically as far as like get a haircut. You know how it's so much easier to do your hair and to feel nice when you have a fresh haircut? Like get that done so that when you're sitting around for six weeks, you can just do something simple with your hair and it's just so much easier to do and looks nicer. Also doing something like getting your eyebrows waxed could be nice. Just so it's like you don't feel self-conscious and sometimes you feel so awful that you don't feel self-conscious anyway, <laughs> but those are just some nice things to have done. Do not get your nails done though, because you're not supposed to wear nail polish at all when you have your surgery. Another thing you want to do is buy any of the products that you need for post op recovery. So go out and get that, get any groceries you want stocked up. If Thanksgiving, so for me, I had it right before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was coming up. So I went grocery shopping and I bought a bunch of frozen pies. I bought all the food we would need for our Thanksgiving dinner. My surgery was Monday, Thanksgiving was Thursday. I knew we were not going to be traveling anywhere for the meal. My husband and kids were very capable of making the meal, but I got all of the food and I made sure we had the ingredients and I made it as easy as possible. You might like to buy an epilator to get all that leg hair off or just shave before, or you could get waxed. Get your house clean and prepped so that you don't have any of that like, oh, I should get up and, and vacuum or something when you're trying to recover from surgery. If you have time, making some freezer meals would be great. Getting Get stuff on hand that is really easy to eat for breakfast and for lunch, especially if you're going to be alone at home and no one's going to be there to prep it for you because it's not really comfortable to move around in those first two weeks. So if you're not going to have someone around to take care of you, get things that are simple for you to grab and eat for those meals. Run any errands that need to be ran, get those taken care of. So again, you're just resting. You're not worried about those things needing to happen after your surgery. Okay, last but not least, the hospital packing list. I do have all of this information in my blog post if you want to read through it and look at it. And I wrote down a hospital packing list because I don't want to forget anything when I'm telling you, but it is in print on my blog if you want to look at that. Again, that's babywisemom.com. So your hospital packing list is very similar to having a baby. Um, so you want things like anything that you need but some things like lip balm is nice, socks, your own pajamas so that you're comfortable and cozy, pack your underwear, perhaps some slippers. You'll want some pads for bleeding post-op. You'll want your toothbrush, your toothpaste, your hairbrush. A robe can be nice. So you might want to stay in your hospital gown, but wear a robe over top of it. 
or just a robe if you're wearing your pajamas and want that over top of that. You want some deodorant and some glasses, hair elastic, scrunchy, get that hair up out of your way, lotion for your dry skin, phone charger for your phone so you can stay in touch and pack your phone too. Any meds that you take, make sure that's packed, a nail file, maybe some nail clippers, a Kindle or books so you have things to do while you're in the hospital. Again, those earplugs, your own pillow. I always take my own pillow to the hospital. I wanna sleep with my pillow. Gum to chew on, cough drops, candy. So those are some ideas. Make sure you pack like a good outfit for going home, your going home outfit. Again, avoid waistbands or tight waistbands. It, you wanna be comfortable going home. Also, as you're preparing for your surgery, make sure you're very clear on what you can and cannot have on your body when you go to surgery. I was not able to have any lotion, any deodorant, any nail polish, any toenail polish. I had to be completely clear and free of any products. I couldn't put lotion on my face even. So make sure you're very clear on what you can and cannot have when you go into that surgery. Okay, that wraps that up. Good luck with your surgery. I hope things go well. I hope you recover quickly. Take it easy on yourself. And if you want to read this more slowly, or there are even more details than this, in my blog post on my blog, bbysmom.com, search hysterectomy. There's only one post about it. So check that out and get all the information you need. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I will answer. Thanks and have a great day.